Uh, yeah, after hearing uh, Randy, I have the urge to tell my own story, and so I will. I mean, after all, you can read uh, the papers uh, out of uh, Ed Dolan's book, and you're getting a gist of, uh, of how good the accommodations were. Uh, and I will uh, uh, verify what uh, Ed was saying. Uh, and in fact, uh, the first night, I was late even finding my room, and it took a while to realize that I didn't have a mat. It was just a small room, but it took a while to realize I didn't have a mattress. Uh, and the reason for that is I didn't have a light either. We didn't know what <laughs> <laughs> there were no lamps. <laughs> Turns out that there was a, a, a screw-in bulb, but it was burnt out. And so, uh, it, anyhow, we finally uh, persevered. Uh, the food, though, was good. You all remember the food? It, it, it was great. That sort of saved us from uh, a lot more complaints. Uh, so, anyhow, I want to tell my story because I, I would offer up myself as the most unlikely person to uh, end up arriving at the South Royalton, as you can imagine. Uh, and the reason, several reasons, one is that my bachelor's degree is in electrical engineering. And uh, from a very hardcore engineering school, uh, Missouri School of Mines and Metallurgy, uh, has about 4,000 male students, and as we counted, 13 female students. <laughs> and, and we weren't even sure we were counting the right one. It was sort of a dim. <laughs> so you, you really had to be interested in engineering, you know, to go to that school. <laughs> And then, uh, I'm a fan of Milton Friedman's in a lot of ways that uh, Ed, I'm sure, realizes. And the main thing I have against him is that he waited too long to put an end to the military draft. And uh, too long for me to take advantage of that. And, and it turns out that my brother was actually drafted into the army and sent to Vietnam. Uh, that's when I ducked into the Air Force took a, a commission and was stationed in, in a little town in upstate New York, Rome, New York, uh, where I was working in an uh, electronic countermeasures lab, trying to figure out how to jam Russian radars. Actually, it was antique radars, because it was the ones they gave to North Vietnam. That was my business. That's what I was all about uh, in the Air Force and, and uh, worrying about ECM. We didn't have any bad economics at uh, at university or at uh, Missouri School of Mines, but we didn't have any good economics either. It was just engineering, you know. We didn't know anything about that kind of stuff. And I kind of shied away from any of the social sciences. Anyhow, I just didn't, I just couldn't get my teeth into it like I could in engineering. But my brother, right before he went to Vietnam, told me that he had discovered uh, Ayn Rand. And he'd read a book or two, and he wanted the rest of them. And so one of my missions was to find more Rand books. And you couldn't find them in Rome, New York. You had to, you, you had to go west to Syracuse or uh, east to Albany. And, uh, but I would find the books. And I'd buy two copies, mail him one, and read the other one. Uh, Later on, I was in the Air Force there for four years, 67 to 71. It was in 71 that Jerome Tuchelli uh, wrote the book, It Usually Begins with Ayn Rand. I would have made a good data point for his empirical study on that. That's because that's how, that's how it worked. And so uh, I read those books, and it's particularly the Capitalism, the Unknown Ideal, which had a bibliography in the back uh, listing uh, Mises and Hayek and... Uh, few others. Didn't have Rothbard in there, but I, I found him uh, I found him soon enough. It, it, it was delayed. I actually, uh, I was trying to be objective about this. I, w I went to the base library and uh, asked for two books. I, I wanted um, Murray's book, uh, Great Depression, and I wanted Galbraith's book, you know, the great crash. And uh, it, it turns out I got the, I got the Rothbard book, the, the one for Galbraith, it, it was a book on the Hindenburg that they sent me. So I, 
I forgot about Galbraith and went ahead and read, uh, and read Rothbard. Uh, okay. Anyhow, uh, when, I, when I exited the Air Force, I was in trouble, like so many other uh, electrical engineers getting out of the Air Force, because the economy was pretty soft. And I kind of wondered, wondered why. I had no idea at the time why the economy would turn down. I uh, didn't know about those such, uh, such things. Uh, and uh, some of my fellow officers were going into MBA programs. And I thought, well, maybe I'll do that. And I looked at the curriculum. And I thought, God, that's dull. That <laughs> MBA program. It just seems way too dull. And I thought, well, economics is what I ought to go into, because I knew some of it, at least by reading Rand. And I ended up at the University of Missouri at Kansas City. Uh, to get a master's degree uh, in economics. Well, uh, UMKC was a hotbed of institutionalism, Veblenian, Eurasian uh, institutionalism. Uh, and they also had some Marxists. They had a little bit of neoclassical, certainly no Austrian. But I, I kind of thrived in that atmosphere because there really were three, three camps, you know, the, the institutionalists, the Marxists, the, Neoclassicals, and uh, everyone thought I was in somebody else's camp, so I just sort of, <laughs> just sort of kept it that way. Uh, so anyhow, but that, that's the time that I wrote that first pamphlet thing that eventually got published by uh, by IHS, and uh, I was invited then. Actually, one of my professors arranged the invitation. Uh, to present it at the Midwest Economic Association in Chicago. My God, you know, this, I was pretty green to be presenting any kind of economics, and especially something this far out. And besides, there was no Austrian around to read this paper. Uh, and so, just on a, on a hope, I sent it to Murray Rothbard. And it turns out that the uh, not too long, a week later or so, I got a phone call. It was Joey, actually. And she said, Murray liked your paper. He wants to talk to you. And she gave Murray the phone. And I had that same experience at the other two. You know, I heard a lot of cackling, you know, and I uh, tried to figure out what was going on. He liked the paper. He, he liked it mainly because, as he said, it beats Keynes at his own game. He loved that. You know, that was, that was something. And so he... Uh, he asked me, he said, are you going to be in New York anytime soon? And no plans to go to New York. So I, and, and so I said, yeah, I'll be there spring break. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a wonderful evening at the Rothbards. And, you know, we stayed up till 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, Walter Block came over to Walter Grinder and one of his students. And we went through that paper uh, paragraph by paragraph. And, I felt fairly confident about going to Chicago and, and giving the paper. But then when I got through with uh, Kansas City, uh, with K UMKC, I needed a job. I, I knew I wanted to go to grad school somewhere else, some PhD, but I didn't know where, okay? I needed a job. I had one offer from Kansas City Federal Reserve Bank. And I would question that. And then I interviewed with the Bendix Corporation, who made uh, electrical power systems. In other words, I was, I'll go for engineering or economics, whichever works, uh, although my engineering was getting a little stale. And uh, couldn't decide. Uh, I had a good interview with Bendix, and I got a call a few days later uh, and, and the guy started talking more about the engineering, and it just all didn't sound like fun to me. And, and finally, he says, now, the one thing with this electrical stuff I want to ask you, he says, do you know anything about corrosion? You know, if in a job interview, you can fake it, you can bluff it, you know. So but I'm sure there's a little silence on the phone, and then I said, No. <laughs> <laughs> and ended up going to the Federal Reserve for a year and a half. 
Maybe, maybe if I'd understood just a little more about the Federal Reserve, I would have become a corrosion expert. <laughs> 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 but I know my time's running short, so I'll, I'll uh, hurry up a bit here. Uh, but in that trip to New York and the visit with Murray, uh, he, he was making lists of people to go to a history conference at Cornell that was exactly a year before the South Royalton Conference, and he invited me to that. And so I'd, I had that experience under my belt before Royalton I even I even had to postpone my start date at the Fed in order to go to the history conference. And then a year from then, I took all my vacation time uh, to go to uh, South Royalton. Uh, and uh, I'm glad I did that. Um, and then I'll just say, here is where I figured out, and, and partly from talking to Murray the year before, uh, where am I going to go? You know, where am I going to go to school? And Murray had told me, go to UCLA, NYU, or Charlottesville, UVA. And I knew about New York. I knew about L.A. I didn't want to go either place, so I went to Charlottesville, you know. And then at the uh, conference itself, Larry Moss was there. I enjoyed his tricks, too. But he was able to tell me a lot about what was going on in Charlottesville and the um, made me happy to decide on that without bothering about the, about the other two. Okay, thank you much. <laughs>